Hi everyone and welcome to Footy Plus, powered by the Adelaide Crows. We're here at the Ice Arena, the home of the Adelaide Adrenaline, our ice hockey team. It was also the home of every single kids party in the 1990s. Thanks for joining us, we've got a massive show packed full of South Australian sport, so pardon the pun, get your skates on. Coming up on the show, the Crows take a bite out of Australian baseball's bold overseas expansion. Without a doubt, uh, one, of, one of the great things that has happened in, in Australian baseball. Like. And Belinda Sloan catches up with Sample midfielder and reality TV star, Jared Petrenko. You know, you to think about life after footy sometimes, and I'm getting to that stage where you have to start thinking like that. There's a baby boom at the Adelaide Crows with at least one player expecting a bundle of joy every month this season. Now, as a huge Crows fan, I don't get too far ahead of myself, but by my calculations, the year 2036 could be a bumper year for the club with these kids eligible for father-son or father-daughter selection. No pressure. But who better to bring you this next story than Footy Plus reporter and mum-to-be, Belinda Sloan. Meet Imogen Rose, the gorgeous new daughter of Sam Jacobs and his wife Izzy. Born just three weeks ago, Im is one of the newest additions to the Adelaide Crows family. Today is a rare opportunity for some of the expected mums at the club to get together and catch up with beautiful Izzy and new baby Imogen. And Izzy, we're all looking to you for advice. How has life changed? I think the biggest change is the feeding during the middle of the night and the broken sleep and surviving off of such little sleep. Um, and I just find myself spending all day watching her do not a whole lot yet, but you still, yeah, get lost in your day just staring at her. What's Sam like as a dad? Uh, Sam is so smitten, as everyone probably already knows, he's already smitten with her. Very hands-on, wanting to help out as much as he can. Um, I'm sure she's going to have him wrapped around her little finger very soon. Josh Jenkins and fiancé Hannah Del Menico are expecting their first child in August. What do you think Josh will be like as a dad? I think he'll be gorgeous. He'll be really hands-on. He's already so excited. I think it'll help to relax him a little bit. He's quite set in his ways. He gets a little bit tense in the mornings and has to take the dog for a walk and puts his earphones in and you're not allowed to talk but I think with a baby he might just take the baby along and add that into his morning routine so. Yeah I don't know if when he puts his earphones on the baby's going to be like okay I'm not allowed to cry now. Yeah. <laughs> I don't think it works like that does it? No, no. <laughs> 2018 really is a baby boom year for the Crows. David McKay, Eddie Betts and Tom Lynch have all welcomed new additions this year. For Andy and Emily Otten, there'll be more than one big day in September. And like Josh, Hannah, Rory and I, they're waiting to find out if it's a boy or a girl. How did you decide not to find out? That was uh, up to Andy, mostly. Okay. I'm not fussed, so I was like, oh, I don't mind, I'd be happy to find out. But Andy's like, no, I want it a surprise. So I was like, yeah, that's fair enough. Well, because you're a real planner. What I know of you, you're a real planner. The longer it gets, the more I'm like, I really wish I knew. <laughs> Josh really wanted to find out what it was, but I stood strong and won that battle, so we're going to have a little surprise. Rory and I are struggling to settle on a boy's name. Girl's name is done. Have you and Josh worked out your names? You don't know what you're having, so you have to choose a boy and a girl. We're the opposite. We've got two names for the boy. Josh likes one, I like one, but we like them both. So we've got the choice there. Girls, we're compromising. So he's pushing one name, I'm pushing one name. Who wins that? I don't know. I don't <laughs> know. <laughs> yeah. Ah, the joys of parenthood. Bring it on. I can't wait. All the best to the girls and their families. Now, fasten your seatbelts because Australian baseball is about to start a whole new journey and the Adelaide Crows are hitching a ride. The Crows reckon they've hit a home run by taking ownership of the Adelaide Bite just as the Australian Baseball League launches an ambitious expansion into Asia and New Zealand. Baseball Australia CEO Cam Vale sat down with Footy Plus to tell us exactly what's in store. Eight teams, two conferences and brand new franchises in South Korea and New Zealand. The Australian Baseball League is widening its strike zone. The world's really our oyster in this space. We can, we can be a significant player 
in Australian sport. Our mantra is really growth. So in five years' time, I would hope we're probably sitting around a 12-team competition um, with additional teams uh, similar to our Korean model, or we could come out of Japan uh, and Taiwan. In the short term, it's South Korea that has the ABL and the Adelaide Crows most excited. It's not hard to see why. While the Korean team will be based in a regional Australian city, its reach will be immense. All of their games will be broadcast into Korea. It broadens our reach, uh, gives us that international uh, exposure. It could be anything, you know, where we expect it will be well north of 10 million people that will watch um, these games. And it's the only baseball in the middle of a very cold winter uh, going back into Korea. So it's a very unique concept. Baseball Australia isn't underplaying the significance of the Crows' investment. Without a doubt, uh, one, of, one of the great things that has happened in, in Australian baseball, like they are a genuine powerhouse in Australian sport that can apply a lot of its skill set and a lot of its learnings to grow baseball in South Australia. Let's apply our resources and, and our expertise in sports management to, to try and you know, ensure that baseball is going to be prosperous and successful for many years to come. And let me emphasise this, um, this will have no impact uh, on the football club. The people running the football side of the business will continue to run it and devote 100% of their time and energy and resource to fulfilling their obligations. The only thing that the Crows management have overlooked is the fact that in baseball, one of the match day experiences, is the ceremonial first pitch. So whether it's the chairman or the CEO or the staff or the players or the coach, I'm really looking forward to the pressure that those guys are going to be under, guys and girls, um, when they throw out that ceremonial uh, first pitch. The 2018-19 Australian Baseball League season runs from November to February. Thanks to our proud new partner, Booper, you could win the ultimate Crows family experience. Bufa are offering families the opportunity to fly on the Crows jet to see Adelaide take on Richmond at the MCG. The prize includes return transfers to the game, premium reserve seating and the opportunity to hang out with Crows legend Tony Modra. Visit afc.com.au to register for your chance to win. Four international ice hockey players are pulling on the skates for the Adelaide Adrenaline this season. Now, we're happy they're here, but we need to make sure they're taking being a South Australian seriously. So we've decided to test their knowledge on some South Australian institutions by sticking a camera in their face and asking them some tough questions. A pie floater. A pie floater. Um, <laughs> I have no clue. <laughs> I have no idea to be honest. Oh right, I heard about this, yes. It's a thing, you like put your uh, the, your meat pie in like your, a soup and you like mash it up and it's like a thing. Pass, no clue. Absolutely no idea. Wang Wang and Fumi? <laughs> I have no idea even where to go with that. <laughs> I don't want to offend anyone. <laughs> Some actors. Oh, uh, the mayor. <laughs> Are they like movie characters or like TV characters? Thunder. Thunderbirds. Thunderbirds. Curling. No basketball, no baseball. Basketball? No hockey, no soccer. That's not a footy team though, is it? No cricket? Uh, rugby? Oh, I don't know. Broom ball? <laughs> oh wow, sounds like motorsport. Basketball? Okay. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> One of them is bound to be basketball. <laughs> basketball? Basketball. So. Oh, uh, Port Power and uh, the Crows. Crows and Port Adelaide. Um, Port Adelaide, or is it Port Adelaide and then the Crows? Adelaide Crows and Port Carling. Port Carly. <laughs> like, because it's a rowdy place, can be rowdy. I don't know. I've never heard that one. Because of the, the highway that goes around the city, R1. I was wondering, I don't know. Can you tell me why? Radelaide is a word that quite boring people use to seem more fun and quirky to describe the city they live in. The same kind of people that would say they're a personality if they lived in Perth or 
I'm from Bris Vegas, if they're from Brisbane. It needs to stop, and anyone who says it is kind of lame. That's just my opinion. Anyway, here's Footy Plus roving reporter Belinda Sloan with your next story. South Australian footballer Jared Petrenko is no stranger to the spotlight, but just recently he took some time away from the footy field to feature on Channel 7's reality TV show House Rules. I'm going to head inside and catch up with him and his beautiful girlfriend Jess to see what they thought of the whole experience. Hi guys. Oh, Hello, how are you going? Come in. Can't wait to see this place. No. Wow. It looks amazing. Now I have to ask you, what was your reaction when Jess told you she wanted you both to apply for House Rules? Um, I was definitely a flat out no to begin with. <laughs> um, he just is not a confident person, he's just so shy when it comes to camera, so I knew that it was going to be a little bit hard. Yeah, I'm bloody nervous. How did the Eagles react when you told them you wanted to take up to half a season off? Um, I'm very lucky that I've got a great relationship with not only the coach and the players but the, the board and everyone at the Eagles. The, the footy club is a massive part of my life and um, you know I'm, I'm giving up sort of the opportunity to play, I suppose going for a premiership as well um, to go and do this. With football it, that was probably the main thing that was really stopping him so when he had a chat with Godzi and Godzi was all for it that was a massive win for me so thank you Godzi. He said it's a once in a lifetime opportunity and um, um, he was very, very supportive of it. You know, you've got to think about life after footy sometimes, and I'm getting to that stage where you have to start thinking like that. Having a meltdown. Oh. A lot of people will be looking to you now as a Renault guru. What are your top tips? <laughs> Probably don't listen to me would be the first one. Um, <laughs> listen, uh, to yeah, listen, to, listen to Jess. Um, now I think measure twice, cut once. That's pro I learned that the hard way a few times. That's a mistake, that's a mistake, that's a mistake. Now that you've done the show yourself, who do you think from the Crows, your ex-teammates, would be best on the show? Um, I'd probably say Sauce Jacobs. Um, I know he's done a lot of stuff um, you know, with houses and everything like that, but he also absolutely loves the show. and. Um, he, he texts me all throughout it and, and um, you know, he's asking me all these questions but I, I think he'd be, uh, I'd love to see him do it. The Tranko decides to kick the goal himself. What now lies ahead in the future for you? Um, I guess, uh, you know, being back with the Eagles uh, the last couple of years, we've had a few shots at, at premierships and um, come, you know, come up short. But uh, that, that's my plan. I, I, all I want to do is win a premiership with the Eagles for now. And um, I've still got, you know, a few years left in me, hopefully. Um, much to <laughs> Jess's dismay, but um, I, that's, that's my ultimate goal. And I'll, I'll do anything to try and get that and, and we'll see how it pans out. If you're looking to raise money for your grassroots footy club, check out the Toyota Good For Footy raffle. Tickets are just $5 each and 100% of proceeds from your ticket sales will go straight back to your club. All the fantastic prizes are provided by our major partner, Toyota. To register your club, visit the Toyota website. And now to our social media review of the week. The West End Redbacks have begun their pre-season ahead of the domestic competition later this year. The boys started with a two-kilometre time trial, which was won by bowler Nick Winter for the second year in a row. Adelaide 36 and Madjok Deng is chasing his dream of playing in the NBA. Deng recently arrived in the States to participate in the NBA minicamps. He hopes to secure a spot in next month's Summer League alongside former teammate Mitch Creek. And South Australia's AFL coaches chose iconic costumes for this year's big freeze at the G. Ken Hinckley took inspiration from Port Adelaide's recent trip to China and dressed as a panda. While Don Pike opted for a red Power Ranger outfit as a tribute to the power stance during the Crows 2018 finals campaign. Make sure you keep up to date with all the latest Crows news and behind the scenes action at afc.com.au and on Facebook, Twitter and Instagram. Well, we hope you've enjoyed the show. A massive thank you to the Ice Arena for having us. You can keep up with us on Channel 7 and 7 Plus in the weeks ahead. Bye for now. Us every week.